Good Monday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top news stories, let's take a look outside that weather window. And yeah, this looked like one of those winter days today. You could feel the cool air. That's for sure the cooler air. We had just an outstanding weekend with temperatures in the mid 40s. Today, not so much. It was a little bit cooler. There is some colder air moving down, but still a beautiful shot from our SkyFi tower camera up on uh, Wenatchee Heights, our cross camera. And you can see those clouds out there and a little bit of sun peeking through at times, but there is a chance for some snow tonight. Overnight tonight into the Cascades and into early Tuesday morning. We're talking about three to six inches of new snow for both Snoqualmie Pass and Stevens Pass. So if you are traveling that way over the next, oh, about 12 hours or so, just check ahead and see what the weather's like. But then, Tell you what, big changes in our weather. Bitterly cold and windy beginning on Thursday. We're going to see a slow cool down through midweek and then the bottom will fall out on Thursday. Here's some overnight lows as we start our day Thursday. 13 in Wenatchee, 8 degrees to our east. Spokane about 7 and 1 below 0 up in the Winthrop area on Thursday. We're talking high temperatures Thursday through the weekend. Only about 20 degrees with lows in the single digits. And we'll have more on that coming up a little bit later on. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. A Wenatchee man faces a possible charge of trafficking stolen property after allegedly trying to sell wiring taken from a construction site. Wenatchee police had an unusually successful weekend catching alleged car prowlers. And a real estate developer who tried to poison a rival's trees in 2014 has had his conviction for the crime vacated. But first we begin tonight. A 15-year-old girl had to be rescued after she slipped off a rock while taking pictures at the top of Mountain Home Road outside Leavenworth. The Chelan County Sheriff's Office said the teen slid down the hill more than 120 feet before striking a tree that stopped her from falling to the bottom. Rescuers with Sheriff's Office's High Angle Rope Rescue Team rappelled down to her and treated her injuries before, before hoisting her out on a litter. A condition on the girl was not available today, but the Sheriff's Office on Saturday said the girl was in bad shape, but credited the Rope Rescue Team with saving her life. Meanwhile, Wenatchee man faces a possible charge of trafficking stolen property after allegedly trying to sell wiring taken from a construction site. 51-year-old Jason Nicholas Corning was arrested last week by Wenatchee police and then released on $10,000 bond. Construction supervisors at Gray City Church in Sunny Slope said someone cut electrical cord leading to one of their on-site trailers early this month and police said Corning later sold $80 worth of wire matching that stolen material at a local recycling center. Corning could also face charges of third degree theft and malicious mischief. Wenatchee police had an unusually successful weekend catching alleged car prowlers. In all, four people were arrested in early Saturday and Sunday prowls, and all were caught thanks to the items they're accused of stealing. Captain Edgar Reinfeld of the Wenatchee Police Department explains. So we had some vehicle prowl incidents over the weekend, but unusually uh, we were successful very rapidly in resolving them in great part thanks to help of community members. One was a set of them that occurred in the center part of town around Castle Rock Street where we had a series of vehicle prowls around 4 o'clock in the morning that include a uh, loss of a debit card and some other items out of a vehicle after, uh, at least on one vehicle, a window was actually smashed out. So that occurred uh, early, early Saturday morning, like 4 o'clock in the morning Saturday. About 11 o'clock in the morning, got a report of the card being used at a local uh, restaurant and actually had video of the card being used. When we started uh, working on that case, it developed further and we were able to develop suspect information and were ultimately avail uh, able to arrest a Huberto Chapa. Mr. Chapa is 43 years old and is a Wenatchee resident. He was arrested for a variety of charges, including identity theft, vehicle prowl, and some others. As we continue developing this case, uh, we served a search warrant on a residence and recovered some stolen property uh, in question, including a phone that was uh, stolen as part of 
one of the vehicle prowls in this case. So Saturday night into Sunday morning was our second set of vehicle prowls we learned of when a person called in shortly after 4 o'clock in the morning again to let us know that about 15 minutes prior, uh, their unlocked vehicle was entered on a residence also in the center area, relatively near to Washington Street. Uh, they had noted uh, two people were in their car, and they did not realize at first that they had lost any items. But a little while later, that we uh, did find that they had stolen some things, including one item that was dropped and was recovered right in the area. A uh, phone that was stolen in one of the vehicle prowls was turned back on and was tracked to a local hotel. Uh, officers worked through that. Uh, developed a search warrant for a hotel room and made contact at a hotel room there where they made three arrests for vehicle prowl, including uh, Zachary Paul Williams, he's 35 years old, most recently with an East Wenatchee address. Also arrested was a Kirsten Anderson, she's 26 years old with a Leavenworth address. Third was a Gregory James Cook, he's 34 years old with a Wenatchee address. And before we go to break, a real estate developer who tried to poison a rival's trees in 2014 has had his conviction for the crime vacated. 52-year-old Ted Schroth, a Bellevue owner-developer of Chelan Lookout, heaped salt around the base of 123 young poplar trees belonging to a neighboring housing development. He pleaded guilty to second-degree malicious mischief and was sentenced to 45 days in jail. He was able to ask for his conviction to be expunged after five years with no further criminal convictions. And on Friday, Chelan County Court Commissioner Scott Volan granted the request. Volan also agreed to restore Schroth's right to possess a firearm. In addition to jail time, Schroth was ordered to pay more than $156,000 to the owners of those trees. Coming up next, Okanagan County reported another COVID-19 death at a senior home facility late last week, bringing the county's total deaths from the virus to 34. Washington hospitals and suppliers on Saturday discovered many of the N95 masks they use every day may be counterfeit. Ski racing returned to the Plain area over the weekend after being mostly shut down since the COVID-19 pandemic began almost a year ago. And Snoqualmie Pass was a treacherous mess on Sunday, the busiest travel day of the week. I'm, I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Mary Maids of Wenatchee has been professionally cleaning and sanitizing homes and businesses in North Central Washington since 1998. Mary Maids uses commercial grade cleaners and virucides. Mary Maids has implemented additional safety and sanitation protocols. They are strictly following CDC guidelines for the safety of their clients and employees. For expert help with cleaning and sanitizing your home or business, call or look up Mary Maids of Wenatchee to schedule your free estimate today. Link Transit is ready when you are. With enhanced health and safety measures, we've installed upgraded air purifiers and safety partitions between drivers and passengers. Plus, the interior of all of our buses are thoroughly cleaned and disinfected every day. When riding Link Transit, please remember to wear a mask, maintain physical distance, sign up for transit alerts, and stay home if you are sick. Healthier Transit is here. Go to linktransit.com to learn more. Welcome back. In another news, Okanagan County reported another COVID-19 death at a senior home facility late last week, bringing the county's total deaths now from the virus to 34. The latest death was a resident of Regency Harmony House in Brewster. Almost half the COVID-19 deaths in the county have been connected to long-term care facilities, with 12 deaths at a home in Tenasket after an outbreak in late November. Washington hospitals and suppliers on Saturday discovered many of the N95 masks they use every day may be counterfeit. 3M Manufacturing warned of phony masks in the supply chain and more than 40 hospitals statewide soon realized they had false marks in their false masks rather in their stockpiles. But Cassie Sauer with the Washington State Hospital Association said Washington hospitals have acquired hundreds of thousands of these masks, many of which have never been used. Um, 
it is incredibly disheartening, um, really, really frustrating to discover that we have uh, these masks. Here's one right, right here. You can see that it has the 3M marking on it. It is a very, we keep saying it's a very good fake. The head straps are great. They're secured on very nicely. The inside looks just like it's supposed to. It has the metal bar. Um, it looks like 3M. It has all the stamps and labels that 3M hat put on their masks. Um, we know that Washington hospitals have acquired hundreds of thousands of these. Many of them have not been used. Um, the Hospital Association, for example, purchased 300,000 of these masks. We know that at least 60,000 60, of our masks remain in the warehouse, so they never even got shipped to a hospital. We've gotten confirmation from quite a few hospitals that they hadn't used them at all. Some other hospitals have used them, and they're trying to determine how many and when and where they were used. We had them in many, many places. I think that across our hospitals, we took back masks in over 500 different departments. And so they were broadly utilized across our organization. Second only to the devastation to patients and their families that are impacted by COVID has been over the last year, trying to help our clinicians and staff decrease their fear and anxiety and to have to reintroduce fear and anxiety to our clinicians who are out there taking care of their communities because someone chose to try to make money off of this situation is really highly frustrating. They, these clinicians have been through enough. This is really very disappointing. Lake Chelan Health confirmed today that they did receive a shipment of the counterfeit masks. However, the masks were never distributed to caregivers and have since been pulled from the hospital's supply. Other health systems, including Confluence Health, didn't immediately respond to inquiries from NCW Life. U.S. Homeland Security is looking in to that fraud. Ski racing returned to the plane, uh, plane area over the weekend after being mostly shut down since the COVID-19 pandemic began almost a year ago. Lake Wenatchee Fire and Rescue hosted the races on Sunday, which drew more than 100 kids. The racing was modified with socially distanced time trials, replacing the usual head-to-head -head competition. Snoqualmie Pass was a treacherous mess yesterday, the busiest travel day of the week. Chains were required on all, but all-wheel drive vehicles into this morning after more than 22 inches of sn snow fell over the weekend. Multiple spin-outs and jackknifing semis led to the closure of both directions of the interstate at about 1.45 Sunday afternoon but crews were able to clear the vehicles and reopen the pass in less than a half hour. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. I'm Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. At Alpine Air, we think of ourselves as customer service oriented retailers. When you make an appointment, please visit our store, meet our people, see our shop. We are serious about heating and air conditioning. Carrier and Alpine Air are offering huge factory rebates and financing options for all your needs. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Call for your free replacement estimate. Heat and air, call Alpine Air, 662-6846. Winter is a great time to trade in your current hot tub. Turn your old hot tub into money with Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa's trade-in program. You can save $500 to $1,000 off of any new Artesian Spa or take advantage of a free Bluetooth music experience. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa recommends draining your hot tub every three months. Ask us about our drain and refill special. Stop on by Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa today. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. Chelan County Auditor Skip Moore says allegations of widespread fraud in the November general election almost certainly have no basis in fact. In tonight's feature story, Moore, Moore told Wake Up Wenatchee Valley's Dan Coons that election laws vary from state to state, but the systems are designed to prevent the sort of fraud being alleged. The statements that were made and the rhetoric that came around concerning voting and elections. I think a lot of the mistakes on both sides when they start talking about elections, 
they get two different things tied together. What we'll see is, and what we have seen, is that the ballots were counted correctly. Recounts showed that when the recount was conducted, you count the pieces of paper, you look at the results, they matched. But that's one part of an election, and that's where we the, everything kind of gets rolled over into one thing when people say it was fraudulent. I don't think you're, there was a case in the nation of people miscounting ballots. I'm willing to discuss what ballots were in the mix. However, be, along those lines, every state has their own rules. Constitution allows for states to conduct elections, and they have their own laws. As long as the state followed their laws, accepted the right, the, the correct ballots, the ballots that should have been accepted, then we saw that the ballots that were counted, the results were accurate. Now we're getting to the discussion comes down to should a ballot have been counted or not. That's going to change from state to state based on rules. But to say a blanket statement that it was fraudulent or an election was stolen is, it really does upset me. Time now to take a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast, and I hope you all had a great Super Bowl weekend. Man, weather-wise, it was great, wasn't it? My family and I had a chance to go up to Waterville, do a little snowmobiling up there over the weekend, and it was just beautiful. We thought we had a lot of wind Saturday, but it just didn't pan out. Today's weather now, more clouds. We did see mostly cloudy skies throughout our afternoon as we look at this beautiful shot from the Wenatchee Heights cross camera down at the Wenatchee Valley. You can see a little bit of sun shining and some of those clouds out there today noticeably cooler as well. And that's just the beginning of a cooling trend that we'll talk more about in a second. 35 unofficial high temperature today. So considering we were 44 yesterday, quite a bit cooler. 40 now is our normal high temperature right where we should be pretty much for overnight lows in the mid to upper 20s. Record high. How about 2018? Boy, I remember it too. 62 degrees just three years ago on this date. Record low it was in 1990 at 5 degrees. 6.9 inches still our snowfall. That's for the entire season going back to October. Sunrise 716 and sunset is at 514. Let's go and take a look at what we can expect as we get into your Tuesday forecast now and we will see a little bit of a cooling trend as we get into the middle part of the week. We'll see that once again tomorrow. 37 Moses Lake, 35 in Quincy, 33 the high temperature in Wenatchee tomorrow. So a couple couple of degrees cooler tomorrow and then we'll cool down a couple of more degrees as we get into Wednesday too. High tomorrow in Chelan about 31 degrees. Surface loop for tonight. We'll see partly cloudy skies. It will be chilly. Here's the edge of that cold front and on the northeast side of that very cold air. Our low temperature tonight once again will get down into the lower 20s. It's called a backdoor cold front because it keeps sliding to the west and most of our weather systems come from west to east. Tuesday mostly sunny skies as we get into the afternoon. It will be cooler as we just talked about though with temperatures mainly lower to mid 30s. For Wednesday mostly cloudy skies and we will be just slightly cooler once again not ruling out an isolated flurry or two and there's that cold air as it begins to slide down. Great Falls, Montana 14 below the high temperature for Wednesday and then on Thursday yeah the bottom falls out of our temperature gauge. Mostly cloudy 30% chance of snow and much colder. We are talking highs on Thursday, only about 20 degrees for the high with low temperatures in the single numbers all over central and eastern Washington. And we're not going to change much heading into the weekend either. Friday, isolated flurries of possibility. It will remain unseasonably cold, but the good news is we could be in that purple area where it is just bitterly cold. And then as we kick off our weekend Saturday, mostly cloudy skies, a 50% chance of snow. You can see us almost in inundated with snow around the state and cold once again with Saturday's highs maybe 21 to 22 degrees with lows again in the single numbers and then on Sunday partly cloudy slightly warmer don't get your hopes up too much we're talking upper 20s as we get into Sunday and of course those temperatures below normal from what we should be seeing this time of year let's take a look at your seven day forecast now tonight we're going to drop down to 19 degrees 33 tomorrow 20 are low and here's where the real 
real change comes in from Wednesday to Thursday. 21, your high temperature on Thursday with a 30% chance of snow. And look at those temperatures Friday and Saturday. 20, 22 before we warm up for our high temperature Sunday to 29 degrees. And that's a look at your local weather forecast. Coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Grandstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Winco, we do everything. Everything. Everything to save you money. Top quality and no membership fees ever. Huh. Winco. Now in Wenatchee at 1340 North Wenatchee Avenue. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy Monday to you. Tom Brady proved once again that age is just a number as the 43-year-old quarterback led the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to a 31-9 win in Super Bowl 55 yesterday. It was uh, Brady's seventh championship as he completed 21 of 29 passes for 201 yards and three touchdowns. Tight end Rob Gronkowski was uh, on the receiving end of two of Brady's scoring strikes as Tampa Bay won its second title in franchise history. On the other side of the ball, it was a long night for 25-year-old Patrick Mahomes playing without his two starting offensive tackles due to injury. Mahomes was left running for his life for what seemed all night long. He was sacked three times, hit eight times, and threw two interceptions. Many viewers were shocked to see so many fans in the stands at Raymond James Stadium. In actuality, about 25,000 fans were in attendance and another 30,000 cardboard cutouts made it look more full. NFL gave out 7,500 tickets to vaccinated healthcare workers in recognition for their strength during the pandemic. Well, prior to Sunday's game, the NFL handed out its awards for the 2020 season. Seattle's Russell Wilson was selected the Walter Payton Man of the Year. The award goes to the player who exemplifies the type of person Walter Payton was, giving of his time and energy off the field just as much as on the field. Wilson says being nominated is a gift in it itself. The Walter Payton Man of the Year Award, to me, it represents excellence, uh, not just on the field, but more importantly, off the field. I think that in life, um, we're granted and given the opportunity to have an impact. I think Walter Payton was the, one of the greatest examples of what he was able to do, not just on the field, but more importantly, off the field, to give back and to serve and to love and to care. You know, my dad's in heaven right now, and I'm sure he's smiling. I was one of his favorite athletes of all time. For me, I, I think it's, it's a blessing um, because I've been able to be around so many amazing young kids, so many amazing people, and just, I think, to be able to give back. You know, the reality is, is that, you know, um, much is given, much is required. To be even mentioned with a name like Walter Payton is one of the greatest blessings that I could ever have and one of the greatest honors ever. Wilson becomes the second Seahawk to ever win the Man of the Year Award. He joins Hall of Famer Steve Largent, who won the award back in 1988. With the award comes $250,000 check that goes to Russell and his wife Sierra's Why Not You Foundation. Well, capping off or recapping the weekend in college basketball, both Washington schools were on the short side in Pac-12 play on Saturday. On the men's side, Oregon sank 12 three-pointers and had a huge edge of rebounding, downing Washington 86-74 in Eugene. The Huskies were led by the 23 points of Kade Green, 13 from Jamal Bay. In Corvallis, Washington State's late run at Oregon State came up short as the Cougars fell 68-66. Isaac Bonton intentionally missed a free throw with three seconds left to try to get an offensive putback, but the Beavers corralled the rebound. DJ Rodman led WSU with 14 points. Coach Kyle Smith was happy with the play of his team despite the loss. Uh, just a really tough battle. I uh, thought our, our guys, we weren't we played hard. We did a lot of good things. Uh, we got on the offensive boards. We struggled a little bit with their uh, matchup zone to start both halves. Um, and, uh, but we eventually broke through both halves and kind of worked our way back in the lead and then uh, just, just couldn't get a break there down the stretch. 
Cougars drop to 11 and 6 on the season with Saturday's loss. Coming up tonight as part of ESPN's Big Monday, the number one ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs play at BYU. Tonight's game is another the Bulldogs had to move around on its schedule after cancellations last week due to COVID. Tip time 8 o'clock on ESPN. On the women's side of the basketball scoreboard for the weekend, Charlize Ledger Walker hit a three pointer with 42 seconds left to give Washington State a lead it wouldn't give back as the Cougars upset fifth ranked uh, UCLA Friday 67. 63 the final ledger walker finished with a game high 28 points coach cammy etheridge says it was a great bounce back after being dominated the previous week by stanford kind of blown away that we were able to pull it off and really proud from our team um um you know knew we had to bounce back in some ways that it's you know after playing and getting pounded a little bit by stanford um, you know, regrouping a young team is, is not always uh, definite. You know, you don't know that your team will respond the right way. But I thought they really, you know, bought into just trying to grow through this and understand that you can get better even when you play and lose to top tens and top five teams in the country. And, and really just took it another step, knowing that, you know, UCLA guards different, really good. They're, they're awesome defensively, but they are very different than how Stanford guards. So. You know, it was it was nice to see us adjust and, and get get back to a little bit more ball movement and and see the ball go through the basket. So just proud of this team, happy that they can experience a win against a top a top five team in the country. Also on Friday, USC overcame a four point deficit at halftime to beat Washington 63 to 54. On Sunday, Washington State couldn't carry the momentum from Friday's upset. Fell to USC 81 71. UCLA had no trouble bouncing back to down Washington 84 to 50. Louisville struggled down the stretch but got a crucial three pointer from Dana Evans in the closing seconds as the Cardinals held off Notre Dame 71 65. Evans led the way with 27 points. Haley Van Lith saw limited playing time, just 15 minutes, scored three points. The new AP poll has Louisville dropping to number three this week after losing to NC State a week ago. South Carolina jumps to number one. UConn is second. Stanford jumps from six to five, while UCLA drops from five to eight. Checking the NHL scoreboard from Sunday, Scott Lofton scored his first hat trick to help the Flyers beat the Capitals seven to four. Chandler Stevenson scored the game winner for Vegas as the Golden Knights clipped the Kings four to three. Alex DeBrincat scored 256 into overtime to lift the Blackhawks over the Stars two one. Red Wings went into Florida and beat the Panthers 4-1. Six different players scored goals in the Hurricanes 6-5 win over the Blue Jackets. Coming up on the schedule today, Islanders and Rangers are dropping the puck in New York. Also, Hurricanes and Blue Jackets, Oilers and Senators, and the Leafs hosting the Canucks. Nashville welcomes Tampa Bay. It's also the uh, same start time for the Coyotes and the Blues. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Grandstrom. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Eric. And now let's check in with Dan Koontz for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan? Thank you, Grant. Join me for a Tuesday edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. We'll have that cold weather forecast. How cold is it going to get? Well, Grant told you. Cold. Plenty cold for most people. Plus headlines, and we'll have uh, sports and everything else that you need to start your day. And tomorrow, February 9th, is National Toothache Day. So think about this for just a minute. Back in the Middle Ages, you know what they did to cure a toothache? They would kiss a donkey. Not going to do that tomorrow. Wake up on Angie Valley, live and local at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Grant, back to you. Thank you, Dan. And that is going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, uh, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us and have a great night. The 2021 models are arriving at Sangster Motors. General Motors is on the move with the all-new 2021 Yukon. Yukon is redesigned from the ground up with a bold new look and all the latest technology. Also new is the Canyon AT4 pickup. This off-road equipped mid-sized truck will challenge any rival for performance and value. Both of these models will offer Duramax diesel options for maximum power and economy. The American challenge is game on at Sangster Motors now. In a world afraid of technology, one man, one show. 
will bring you the newest innovations that may just change your life. This summer, Ray McNeil and your weekly tech update is your weekly tech update with Ray McNeil.